that tune is called Abergenolwyn. It's a hymn tune and it was written by D. Emlyn Evans. He was a prolific composer of all sorts of music and an arranger of folk music and he lived in the latter half of the uh, 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. I don't know why he called the tune Abergenolwyn, whether he had connections with the area because he was originally from uh, Castellnew with Emlyn. Uh, but uh, I have connections to Abergenolwyn. Uh, my name is Meyer and uh, I spent uh, quite a few years of my childhood living in Rabar. Uh, my grandparents on my mother's side had uh, moved to Abergenolwyn in the beginning of the 50s and they uh, they had bought some Natal stores and uh, they ran the shop until the beginning of the 60s. And at the end of the 50s, my father was um, uh, appointed headmaster uh, of the school and uh, we lived in Abergenolwyn until we moved later on in 1968. My father's uh, side of the family are very deep rooted in the in the area uh, in Dissany. We go back many centuries. So I have uh, uh, a very soft spot in my heart for Abergenolwyn and the area uh, in general. I had a, a very happy childhood uh, and I remember it being filled with um, singing and playing and carnivals and um, school, Sunday school chapel and the Eisteddfod. Uh, I remember learning a lot of, uh, of songs and um, listening to stories and, and going for walks. We went for walks with adults or we went, we walked a lot as, as children. We would go and draw. Uh, when we were very young, we'd be taken and draw by some of the older children who would uh, be responsible for us as we went and draw for a walk. Um, and as we got a little older, we would wonder uh, you know, quite far away from, from the village, even though we were so young. So I have very, very fond memories. And uh, as I was saying, uh, 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 lots of stories. I remember a lot of stories, and many of them very local stories. And this story I'm going to tell you now is one of those stories I remember from my, uh, my early childhood. It's, the sto it's one of the stories about Cadvan and Cadvan was going, of course was the the saint Saint Cadvan he was one of the first of the saints to come over from uh, Brittany and he uh, he set up a a church in in Tywyd, uh, and also in San Cadvan in uh, Monmouthshire no not in Monmouthshire <laughs> Montgomeryshire in Montgomeryshire and uh, he he was later appointed um, as an abbot on Anisenthi in Bansi, on Bansi Island because Aenion Vrenin the king of Llyn uh, wanted him to to come to Enthi and to set up an abbey there and uh, Cadvan was the first abbot of that uh, happy. But uh, as with many of the of the saints, the Welsh saints, there are uh, quite a few stories and legends and myths. Uh, and like all legends and stories and myths, they may be true, they may not be true, but there's usually a little bit of truth in them. Now, Cadvan used to spend a lot of time walking between Tawin and San Gatvan. And he would start off from Tawin and he would walk up towards Abergenolwy, not along the road as we know it today, of course, but uh, and probably not along the the the, uh, the 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 tracks 
of the Talithin Railway, but a little higher up along the tops of the hills. And when he got a little thirsty, he would stop uh, and he would have a drink from Pistil Cadvan. And uh, if he got a little tired, then he'd have a sit down in Eisteddava Cadvan. Eisteddava, Eistedd, sitting. So it was where Cadvan sat, Eisteddava Cadvan. And then he would make his way uh, towards Brenereglois and Pontleron. And there is uh, a theory and a tradition that he also had a church in Brenereglois. But that any uh, remains or any signs of any remains are long gone, of course, and buried under the rubble of, of, the, of the quarry. But I have read recently that um, they may have moved before they they started uh, quarrying. They may have moved some big stones um, that may have been gravestones and formed them into a, a, a circle uh, inside which were planted uh, some trees. I don't know if there's any truth in this, but uh, it's uh, it's recorded as a maybe. Now, let's go back to the story then, shall we? As I remember it being told to me. Now, one day, Catvan was on his way from Towin to Llangatvan along his usual path. And of course, this path that he took, was known as Llwybr Cadvan and is still known as Llwybr Cadvan. And he was walking along his, his path and it wasn't a very nice day. In fact, it was a terrible day. The rain was coming down and the mist and the cloud were low and it was quite miserable. And as he walked along the path, the rain became heavier and wetter and the the mist and the clouds became lower and thicker and suddenly he found himself lost. Somehow he'd veered off his own path and he found himself up to his knees in bogs and sinking and low and he just couldn't see anything because of the mist and he was wet and it was miserable and nightfall was you know around him and it was becoming darker and darker and he was becoming wetter and wetter and his knees were going deeper and deeper into the bogs I didn't know what to do and so he did a sensible thing he stopped, he sat down, and he thought about it. And while he was sitting down thinking about what to do next, he looked down into the valley beneath him, and he saw a light. One solitary light, one little light down in the valley. And he thought, ah, if I can get down there they may be able to help me and point me in the right direction they might even offer me some food and shelter so off he went scrambling down into the valley scrambling and slipping and sliding until he eventually came to the house where the light was and it was a marvellous house, a big, strong, solid, stone-built house with a big oak door, which he knocked. And the door was open by a friendly, jolly woman with a big smile. And she invited him in. She was called Caddy. And Cathy invited Cadvan into her home. 
and the whole family were sat around the table so Cadvan was invited to join them and he was uh, given everything that they were eating which is a marvellous meal, a big family meal and he had some drink and a big roaring fire that he could warm up it was a very happy place and Cadvan started telling some stories and he started telling him who he was and where he'd come from and he started telling them about the the horrible experience up on the mountains and getting lost and up to his knees in the bog and he was called and he suddenly realised that uh, the family were just being polite and nodding and that they actually had no interest at all in his stories. So he decided that he would um, stop talking and he listened and he had a marvellous time listening to the family, telling their stories and what they had been doing during that day and the connections they all had and Oh, he enjoyed himself, but it had been a long day and a stressful time and uh, Caddy noticed that uh, Cadvan was getting very tired and she said, Anne, she said to the maid, Anne, take Cadvan to his room. I think he's a bit tired. And so Anne showed Cadvan his chamber. And in fact, it was the most marvellous room Cadvan had ever seen. Huge room with a big, comfortable bed in the middle. And he oh, sat on the bed and he lay down his head on the softest pillow that he had ever known. And he floated off into the sweetest sleep that he'd ever slept. Oh. When he woke the next morning, he couldn't believe his eyes. Where was the pillow? Where was the bed? Where was the room? Where was the house? Where was Caddy and her family? were nowhere to be seen. There was no sign of them anywhere. And Cadvan was asleep on a bed of grass and gorse and he had a hard stone for a pillow. He couldn't understand what had happened. And while he was walking towards Slangadvan, which he found, finally found the, the path, he was pondering, who were they? Who were those people? Caddy and her family and Anne, the maid. And what had happened to the house and this was what he was pondering on his way to Sangadvan. No one in Sangadvan knew the answer and Kadvan never discovered who they were or what had happened to them. But every time he referred to that valley, he called the valley Cum Kadiagan. And you can visit Cum Cadiagan, or as it's known today, Cum Cadian, near Pants Perthog. There are some lovely walks there. So there you are, one of the Abergenolwyn stories that I remember from my childhood. I hope you enjoyed it.